Hi, this is Job Aguas, and welcome to my lectures in Philosophical Anthropology. And this is now the second part of my lecture on man as an existential subject. So, in this part, I will be discussing man as an embodied subjectivity. So, first the notion of embodied subjectivity. It was the first philosopher, Gabriel Marcel, who developed the notion of the human person as an incarnate subjectivity. The central datum of our human existence, according to Marcel, is our being an incarnate subject. Our human existence is always a reference to our having a body or being a body. Marcel says that when I affirm that something exists, I always mean that I consider that something as connected with my body and was able to put, in that sense, I am able to put in contact with it, however indirect this contact may be. But what does it mean by man or the human person as being embodied or incarnate? Well, to be incarnate is to be put into flesh okay? or to appear as a flesh or to appear as a body, our physical body. According to Marcel, to be incarnated is to appear to oneself as a body, as this particular body without being identified or distinguished from, from it. When you look at the mirror, for example, uh, you see yourself, and of course, although you see yourself, you are actually physically you are seeing a, a body, your body, your face, um, your head, your hands, your feet, your chest, etc. So you appear to be this particular body. But of course, you don't want to be just be identified with the body because you say, well, I'm not just the body, I am this person, I am Juan, I am Pedro, and so on and so on. But you don't, don't also so want to be distinguished from it because that body is really yours. So, a human person, we appear and exist in the world and we relate with things, with other beings, as a body. Okay? I can relate again with this laptop because of my eyes. I can control the keys because of my fingers or because of my hand. And these are parts of my body. So we appear and act in the world as a body. And it's through the body that we relate with the outside world and with the objects of the uh, objects outside our body. So our body, though considered as a physical object or material object, and appears as a physical object. It's not really just an object. Okay. Our body, although it is physical, is different from our gadgets, our, our, different from our cell phones. Our body is different from them, different from the books that we read, or any kind of material object you know, that could be in front of that, that we could use. So although we have a body, we cannot just be identified with it because we are spiritual subjects. We, we cannot be fully identified with physical objects because as we have already discussed, we have our inner selves, we are subjects. But because we express ourselves through the body, we cannot be distinguished from it because of course, uh, when somebody describes you, at least physically, then he will be referring to your physical attributes, physical qualities, your physical appearance, which are actually based on your body. So according to Marcel, <clears throat> of this body, I can, I can express neither say that it is I, nor that it is not I, nor that it is for me, like an object. So the body can be both partly subject and partly object. Now, embodiment suggests our unique experience of intimacy with our body. We can say, my body is mine. It is my lived body. 
That's a unique experience because, of course, other people, they have their own respective bodies. But our body is only, only ours. This is the meaning of intimacy, that we can closely be connected with our body. It is If there is no intimacy, then our body would just be anybody's body. It would just be like any body. But our body are uniquely ours. Intimacy suggests that we cannot just consider our body as an object. A purely objective conception of the body would fail to recognize the bond that exists between the self and the body, or myself and my body. So according to Marcel, there is a distinction between a body or a body object and my body, a body subject. A body is something, an object. And when we see body or the body only in an, as an object, then we see it just a body. That is a particular body that can be defined, that can be described, just like any other object. It can be categorized, it can be this. So, for example, you take the, your height, your weight, well, although it's your weight, but you, you try to identify, you, we, we try to uh, categorize, define our body. So your vital statistics, when you get your vital statistics, you are treating your body as an object. Okay? So the body, the idea of a body is definite. It is fixed and can be applied to any person. Everybody has his own specific, you know, uh, vital statistics. There is some anonymity to a body because it could be referred to just any other person. Okay. So to consider the body as an object is to consider it as something that can be scientifically known and labeled and categorized. So when a surgeon, for example, examines the body of a patient, he he or she takes that objective attitude. He objectifies the body. In our science subject, we consider the body as an object of investigation. So uh, in anatomy, we identify the parts of the body right, and study them. So in this subject or discipline, the body is considered to be an object. It can be analyzed, studied, used, etc., etc. So imagine, for example, the human body in our textbooks. They are just images of anybody's body, anonymous body does not belong to anyone. However, the body is not just an ordinary subject or an instrument or a physical object, a physical matter. Because an instrument means, is a means of extending or strengthening the power or the ability of the person who uses such instrument. So the instrument is something that is outside of us that can harness, that we can use that can enhance our ability. Like, for example, a, a hammer used by a carpenter or, say, a gadget used by students or by anybody. Okay? So if we consider our body as merely as instruments that are external to us, then we objectify the body. But in reality, the body is not just external to us because this body is us. My body is not external to me. It is, in fact, me, myself. Right? So although my body can be considered as an object and can also be considered as an instrument, it's not really an instrument. Okay? It's not just an instrument. Okay? So, so I've said, there is an intimate relationship between me and my body. The body is not just a body because it is me, it is my body. So a body is objective, my body is mine, it is subjective. My body so far, it is my body, it's both something that I have and something that I am. So you can say, I have a body and that body is objective. But when you look at it at closer, this body is actually yours. You are the body, right? So consider yourself, when you look at the mirror, you see the body, and it is our body. And of course, we can appreciate our body. We can say, ooh, 
I am sexy, I am handsome, I am macho, I am pretty, etc., etc. But this body that appears to us not just a body that we can describe or we can identify or we can define or we can measure because it is us. So, um, with this attitude towards the body, which, uh, you know, we can look at it as ourselves, then we see it not just anybody. It is us. Okay? It is us. It is our body. So you say, I am my body. There's no gap between the self and the body. Because the body is the self. The self is the body in that sense. Okay. Now, feeling is a mode of embodiment according to myself. Feeling is the first and basic mode of embodiment according to myself. Our body, because it is ours, it presents itself to us in the very first instance when we feel something. We feel the body. So I am my body only in so far as I'm being, I am a being that has feelings. Okay. That's the first mode of embodiment that we feel our body. So for example, if somebody steps on your toes or if your fingers or finger get hurt, then you feel it because of your body. Yes, you can say my 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 foot hurts, but it's not just the foot that hurts, it's actually you because of this feeling of embodiment. So the radical feeling of my body is as intimately mine as a sense of embodiment is manifested through the internal perception which Marcel calls chronesthetic. Internal perception is present in such experiences as being tired, hungry, energetic, being enthusiastic, etc. These are our internal feelings of our body. Whenever we feel hungry or tired or strong or weak, we immediately connect with our body. So this is a basic feeling, according to Marcel, because it allows us to experience our body as ours. This basic feeling lies at the root of all other feelings, like the sensation activities that immediately connect us with the surrounding objects of the world. Before we can feel the objects that are outside of us, we feel first our body. That's the immediacy of the body, of our body to us. Okay? So our immediate contact with our body puts us in direct contact with the world. So feeling as the first mode of embodiment implies two mutually related acts. First, the internal perception of our body. And second, the external perception of the world. So we feel ourselves, we feel our hunger, we feel our thirst. But we also feel the wind, the heat of the sun. Okay. These are external perception. And there are no gaps between these acts. So when we perceive or feel our body, we also feel or perceive the world. We feel the wind in as much as we feel the hurt or the pain of our body. We feel the energy within us in the same um, in in the same sense that we of course as we feel the heat of the sun. Of course, there are of course differences in the manner in which we feel ourselves and we feel the external the, the objects external to us. But we perceive both. You know, we have the same sense of or we have. Uh, we have this perception, the internal and the external. Embodiment and the participation in the world. Our internal perception or inner awareness of our body is not based on observation. Although our body is something that we can observe by us and by others, we can, as I said, we can look at the mirror and see ourselves. So our body can be both something that we can be aware of and an object of public knowledge by others. We can observe ourselves, others can also, uh, we can observe ourselves and others can also observe us. 
We can look at our body and other people can also look at it. The inner experience or awareness of our body, of our sense or embodiment, is fused with an awareness of our being in the world, being with others. Right? So being a body as the very mode of our existence signifies our intersubjective bond with the other beings around us. The experience of a body is basically our sense of community with ourselves and with the world. So our body is definitely our connection or mediator with the world. It is through the body, our body, that we relate and communicate with the objects of the world, not just the objects of the world, but also with others. The world may appear to be something detached from us, but because of our body, we become aware that we are a being in the world. And it is through the body that we establish our presence in the world, our existence, in the world is manifested or experienced through embodiment. We relate with the world and everything in it through our body. Embodiment then becomes the very basis of the self's relation or participation in the world. Imagine if you are if you don't have the body, how can we relate with the world? How can a, how can a ghost or a spirit relate with the world? That is quite impossible. So according to Marcel, our relation with the world is a kind of participation. Participation in the sense means that we are able to cross over the boundaries between our embodied self and the world. Our self can cross over to the world because of the body. This participation becomes possible because of our sensation or feeling of the world. So if there is a feeling of ourselves, there is also a feeling of the world because of the body. Now, there are two kinds of participation. First is objective participation, and the second is non-objective participation. Objective participation is taking part or simply having a, uh, a share in something. Like, for example, participate in the ownership of a commodity or property. We participate, for example, uh, uh, in the in in the in the ownership of the property of our parents so we can share for example food uh, we can sh participate in you know in uh, for example you uh, you 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 share your I mean, you share your your gadgets or you give arms to the poor that's objective participation in objective participation was is concerned with data. I'm interested in how many of us, for example, will share the property. How are we going to, you know, partake, divide this and that? So you take part in that. In that sense, we take part in the sharing. But in non-participative or non-objective participation, we participate in a ceremony or an activity. Like for example, we participate in praying the rosary, or participate in the mass, or participate in singing, or participate in the class. Or when you listen, for example, in this lecture, you participate, in a sense, to the lecture by listening. So here, we are not interested in data or facts. We are not interested in how many are the participants. For example, how many are joining, or watching, or uh, watching this, this online, this video recording of the lecture. We don't we don't count the analytics. Okay? We just take part mentally, spiritually, emotionally, subjectively in the activity. So the key to the relation of ourself and the world is the feeling of our body as a mode of participation. Because the feeling of our body, ourself and the world are defined and related. Participation understood as feeling ensures that as an embodied being, we are not just an spectator of the objects in the world. We are not just a detached observer. We don't consider the world as something that is detached or outside of us. We participate in the world. Not objective participation. And our participation in the world is through the feeling of our body. So embodiment and its mode of feeling as participation is the foundation of our experience 
and existence in the world. Okay. Now, the body as a visible reality. Our body, aside from being the foundation of our existence, is also a visible reality. According to Karl Wojtyla, our body is the material and visible reality which is accessible to our sense. Our body, you know, other people see us. You now they hear us talk. They see our gestures, our movements, our behavior. And they relate to us or with us to our body. So it is our body that establishes our physical existence. The outer shape of our human body, our physical features, our characteristics, determines what is visible in us. Our body affects our individual physical appearance and the definite impression that we make on others. Our body is composed of different parts which have their respective places and proper functions. Our human body, of course, composed of different parts, forms an outwardly whole that is proportioned in a specific manner that is appropriate to the human person or to man alone. Our physique is unique to man. Our posture is unique to us. Right? The position of our head, shoulders, arms, hands, torso, legs, feet, they are so balanced in proportion that our physical appearance applies, as, applies to us alone, as human beings. Nobody appears like human beings. Okay? So we see a special distribution and coordination of our bodily parts and our mutual coordination in the whole of humans towards a form. So when look at with the body, the body is, is a distinct feature of man. And aside from what is external, the body has its own particular inwardness. You know, our internal organs, they have their own specific functions. Though they have different functions, they function as one. Okay. So when we take in food, when we eat food, for example, our mouth, of course, we chew the food and then goes down to our stomach. Our stomach digests the food, it squeezes out the nutrients. Right? And then, of course, the different nutrients go, they go to the different parts of the body. The body has a very unique, the human body has a very unique function, a kind of inwardness, particular inwardness. So in the outside of the body, it reflects the device diversity in the mutual coordination of the different external body parts. Look inside, it reflects also the diversity in the mutual coordination of all the different internal bodily organs. That's how unique the human body is, according to Vaitiwa. So Marcel and Vaitiwa recognize that man manifests and expresses himself through his body. Man relates with others in the world through his body. And it is through the person's dominion over his body that the freedom of the person is realized and the person comes into contact with the external world. For Vaitiwa, the body is also the basis of our affinity with nature. And because of the body, the human person genuinely belongs to nature. Because we share some qualities, some capacities, some abilities with nature. Well, man is a subject because of his physical aspects which is manifested in his body, he is part of the natural order. And this implies our similarity to the rest of nature. Our position in nature is closest to the animals, particularly the so-called higher animals. Because like, like the other animals, our body functions like an organism. And by nature, adapted to vegetation and reproduction. The natural vitality of our human body is essentially vegetative, vegetative in nature. And the external conditions of the body's vegetation are similar to those of the vegetation of the other bodies. See, we nourish, we digest, we grow, we reproduce. So just like other bodies, our body is determined by the natural environment, by the climate, the atmosphere, the food that we, we eat, okay? 
the liquid that we drink. They are the means of the vegetative process and regeneration. So our body is also the basis of our reproduction of species through sexual reproduction. So our body perpetuates our existence as human species. So the body is so important to us, right? not just, you know, not just for, not just as a means to express ourselves, but it shows a lot. There are so many things, the body is so complex, and there's so many things that we can associate with our body. So we are truly an embodied subject. Thank you very much for listening. That ends the second part of this presentation. And as I always say, be safe, be healthy, and God bless.